Ladies and gentlemen, you've been connected to the Tata Coffee Q and FI23 earnings conference call. Please stay connected. The conference will begin shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been connected to the Tata Coffee Q and FI23. Earnings conference call, please stay connected. The conference will begin shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Tata Coffee Q1 FI23 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Aniruddha Joshi. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Seema. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we welcome you all to Q1 FI23 Results Conference Call of Tata Coffee Limited. We have with us Senior Management, represented by Mr. Chako Thomas, Managing Director and CEO, and Mr. K. Venkat Ramanan, Executive Director, Finance and CFO. Now I hand over the call to the management for the initial comments uh, and uh, views, views on the quarterly performance and then we will open the floor for question and answer session. Thanks and over to you, sir. Thank you, Anirudha. And uh, good morning, everyone on the call. Uh, this is Chako here. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for joining in today. Uh, I'm here, obviously, to present the quarter one financial performance of the company. Uh, very, very pleased to inform you that we've uh, witnessed a a strong quarter one across uh, practically all the businesses. Uh, while the challenges that uh, have largely been around uh, cost, logistics, and uh, demand, uh, but I think the efforts that we took uh, in reducing this these impact impacts have been actually quite uh, rewarding. Uh, this uh, let me start firstly by uh, giving you a snapshot of the standalone uh, performance. Revenue from uh, operations went up by 30% compared to the same quarter of the previous year. That is uh, 232 crores as uh, opposed to 179 crores. Uh, the standalone uh, PAT was also up by 7% uh, uh, up to 30 crores uh, for this quarter. Uh, these uh, numbers were largely uh, possible on account of uh, the very uh, uh, good gross margins that we've been uh, uh, doing in instant coffee, uh, the improved realizations that we have had uh, uh, because of our uh, constant uh, look at you know, different geographies, and this is all on the back of uh, the inflationary pressures that we have spoken about, whether it is around uh, uh, freight or uh, steel, etc. Uh, the other uh, factor, of course, has been uh, the volumes have also been uh, very uh, good for our instant coffee business. And uh, finally, last but not the least, I think uh, even in our plantation business, you know, especially the green bean business, there's been uh, uh, a good traction both in sales and uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know realizations and consequently the profitability. 
I'll move on to uh, individual performances uh, uh, on instant coffee, both in India and uh, Vietnam. We saw uh, a good and robust performance with uh, both uh, plants in India operating at uh, peak capacities. Uh, sales for the quarter were very, very good, and they were evenly uh, split across uh, the regions that we actually operated. Uh, uh, call out here, of course, is around the the cost optimization and efficiency improvements that we have uh, carried out, uh, and these are common threads that run across all, almost all the operations and all the activities that that we undergo. Uh, this uh, the reason that I am uh, saying this is also, of course, uh, the fact that there has been you know uh, unprecedented increases in uh, power and fuel costs largely driven by coal, uh, you know, diesel prices, etc., and uh, obviously other other costs also. Despite all that, uh, I think uh, uh, cost optimization and efficiency improvements have uh, helped us to a great extent. Similarly, uh, uh, at Vietnam, uh, the the uh, the performance has also been again been very excellent. The impact uh, again of ocean freight logistics. Uh, uh, bottlenecks, etc., which still uh, are prevailing. Uh, I think uh, the efforts taken towards new product development, uh, the speed at which we have executed orders, and uh, the continued focus on uh, uh, you know the, the the customers and their needs, uh, especially during these times, uh, have uh, been the contributor to the the performance per se. We have a very very strong uh, order book. And uh, this is uh, this this uh, this we hope will continue in the next next few quarters uh, for the year. On uh, on the plantation front, I think uh, on the coffee plantations, the weather has been fairly conducive, and I think uh, both uh, coffee and pepper plant, uh, pepper crops, hopefully in the next couple uh, couple of quarters, would uh, see the impact of. Uh, uh, this good weather. We continue to do all our agricultural practices on schedule and and again, as I mentioned, cost management is a fairly uh, uh, large theme that we we have uh, on on uh, on the plantations also. Uh, the green bean business, as I mentioned earlier, has uh, fared extremely well, uh, and uh, despite uh, the uh, the uh, terminals coming down substantially. I think our premiumization uh, efforts and timely sales uh, paid off uh, for the quarter. Uh, on tea, uh, the crop, while it has been impacted by bad weather, I think there is uh, some, uh, uh, you know, uh, some silver lining on in the in the horizon where we see improved prices, especially for the orthodox type of teas largely driven by the crisis that is actually happening in uh, Sri Lanka. Finally, I move on to the consolidated results. Uh, for quarter one, uh, the revenue from operations has been 662, 662 crores compared to 532 crores, increase of 24%. Again, credit uh, goes to the good performance of uh, uh, 8 o'clock, both in sales and the innovative uh, uh, product portfolio. And of course, the contributions from the uh, standalone uh, entity also. The consolidated net profit is 65 crores, which is also uh, a substantial growth of 41% year on year. Quarter one uh, has been a good quarter for Tata Coffee, as I mentioned, and we move ahead with the, uh, the new scheme of arrangement. Uh, and I think the pillars that will continue to drive performance uh, and our focus uh, would be around cost optimization, efficient planning, and uh, utilization of uh, efficient planning and utilization of the energy and other input, uh, you know, input materials. I think uh, our customer focus and execution of orders from uh, India and Vietnam, uh, the premiumization and the NPD pipeline that we have will continue to be, uh, you know, uh, very much in, in focus. Uh, I will now hand over to my colleague uh, Venkat, who will take you through the performance, uh, the financial performance for quarter one uh, financial uh, OD event. Thanks, Chako. Uh, 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 good day and good morning to all the analysts. 
So as Chakwa has summarized, uh, the, the quarter has been very good for us. So uh, uh, all the uh, you know uh, uh, segments, both on standalone and con uh, uh, Vietnam as well as the uh, uh, eight o'clock did well. And uh, for st on standalone performance, the revenue has gone up by around 30 odd percent. And uh, uh, that's again a, a reflection of uh, the perf improved performance in plantations on coffee, uh, coffee especially, and on instant coffee. Tea has been a little bit adversely affected due to weather conditions, but but there, but there is as we go forward, we have we have put in a lot of investment in uh, factories, etc. So we should we should stand in good stead. On the other income uh, line, there is uh, the, there is a phasing in respect of dividends from eight o'clock coffee, but overall for the year we don't expect any change. And on the expense side, I just wanted to call out a couple of things. One. The compared to previous year, the coffee prices per se has gone up, so that would obviously be reflected in the cost of materials. And secondly, on some of the other costs like employee benefits, etc., there are the usual increments and statutory kind of you know uh, increases which are which are which are there. And also on the other expense lines, there is an increase that's also driven by some of it driven by increase in chemicals and fertilizers as far as the plantations is concerned, and other uh, usual selling sales related freight and other costs, and including power and fuel. So with that, the, pro uh, the profit after tax for the, uh, for the standalone is at uh, 30 crores, and and or before tax at 36, which are which are higher than the, the similar quarter for the for the previous year. With respect to the uh, consolidated, as we as we said, the eight o'clock has had a, a good performance. It improved realizations flowing into the into the bottom line. That's also driven by you know uh, the, the higher uh, green co uh, uh, coffee prices. But obviously, with some some inventory in pipeline, they, they they will get some benefit out of that. And on the Tata Coffee Vietnam, there has been improvement in realization, and also which which has flowed into the in, into the bottom line. So there has been, of course, some impacts around uh, higher freight costs, uh, etc., which has not come back, to, uh, which has really not come back to the pre-COVID levels in that sense. But obviously, the, so uh, but on the uh, on the uh, uh, no, holistic sense, overall sense. All the segments of the of the business have performed well, which has resulted in the consolidated net profit uh, being higher by 42 uh, percent. The, the consequently, the, the EPS of uh, the consolidated entity is also higher at 2.41 rupees compared to 1.53 of the, the previous year's quarter. With this, I hand over for for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchtone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Thank you. We take the first question from the line of Samir Madan, investor. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, good morning uh, to the uh, team of uh, Tata Coffee. I have a couple of uh, questions from my side. The first is related to our pepper business, and the second one will be related to Vietnam. So I'll begin with pepper first. Um, I wanted to uh, know and understand where, what does our total pepper wine uh, kind of plantation count now look at. I understand it has been going up over the years. And out of the planted uh, figures, uh, I had a couple more details that I wanted to get some insight into. How many of those uh, total counts have now reached near the productive phase? Uh, we don't need to say maximum yield, but at least they have started producing some yield, which may or may not go up. I understand there are many uh, factors in there, but I'm looking for understanding uh, where we are in the ballpark and how the trend is looking. And also to understand if we talk about some approximation of how many of our pepper wines are uh, in or near a productive phase today, how is that looking to say a couple years ago and or three years ago, something like that? So we don't need to stick to exact figures, but please help me understand this part better. Thank you. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, so I'll, I'll take this uh, question. Sure. So uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Samir. Uh, so uh, on 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 the pepper uh, business, actually, uh, what we have done is over the last four or five years, uh, very extensively replanted and uh, rejuvenated our pepper uh, wines. And these pepper wines, uh, as uh, you rightly said, uh, are in the ballpark numbers of anything between. Uh, uh, 17 to uh, 18 to 18 to 18 and a half lakh uh, wines uh, as we speak only of this only about uh, 30% is in the actual uh, stage of uh, maturity every year we have close to what uh, you know 10 5 to 10 percent which come come into maturity which uh, as, as, as you rightly said you know I'm not uh, uh, putting numbers to it because it's, very, it's going to be very very difficult because you know uh, pepper uh, planted in Arabica with the higher shade would have a, have a lesser yield and robusta with, with lesser shade will have high yield etc. So I'm just giving you a ballpark number. So uh, when you look at what uh, and you have to also understand that pepper also has an issue of senility as well as you know there, there could be uh, some uh, fungal diseases that it could uh, uh, get impacted by. So every year you will have a certain number that actually gets removed. Otherwise, you know, the fungal disease, uh, for example, can wipe out the whole whole estate. So we do that uh, culling out uh, very, uh, uh, you know, extensively to ensure that uh, the you know uh, the pepper pepper uh, crop gets uh, protected. So uh, all in all, I think the pepper production. Uh, going forward is only poised to increase, uh, albeit the fact that there is uh, there is a uh, level of maturity that will come in uh, in terms of numbers every year going forward. So I hope I have answered that question for you. Absolutely, sir. Very, very uh, helpful and pointed uh, answers. Thank you very much for that. Uh, my second question is related to our uh, Vietnam uh, subsidiary. Uh, I would like to understand how much has been our total investment into Vietnam so far and uh, how has the revenue been doing uh, in the last quarter and uh, the last financial year? So the total investments for the project was around, around 60 odd million. Okay, so the, the roughly around at that time it was around 350 crores, 350 to 375 crores. After that, there has not been you know any infusion for the purpose of the project itself. Though there has been some infusions required, to, you know, for the local for, for some operating expenditures and all in the initial phase. So that's uh, that's what on the Vietnam. On the on the turnover, see, I don't we don't want to disclose numbers as such. We are operating at around 90 uh, uh, around 90 to 95 percent capacity, and uh, it and, and it has been uh, kind of you know it's already broken even we are making money there, so there's no issues around that. And quarter in quarter the performance has only really improved. So, of course, there have been some blips because of the ocean freight increase and all that, which I had to get normalized. But as we see, we have definitely, as we earlier also mentioned, we have a pilot plant in Vietnam. It is a state-of-art technology. So that way, we have been able to, uh, you know, uh, generate uh, fairly, uh, you know, uh, good prices there. And we also into come some of the, you know, other than, you know, uh, kind of specialty offerings on decaf and all those blends, which are also delivering us. All right. The order book, of course, order book continues to be very, very healthy. In fact, we have, you know, we'll we'll have to look at how to, you know, uh, you know, kind of, you know, fulfill the orders because we we are uh, quite, uh, you know, full on the order book for the year. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Pranjal Garg from ICSA Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, good morning, sir. Congratulations on good set of number. Uh, my first question is regarding the Vietnam market itself. Uh, sir, what is your outlook for growth and profitability in the region? Uh, that's my first question, followed by the second one. As you highlighted that we are operating on peak capacities, uh, 90 to 95%. What are our CAPEX plans there? 
See, actually, just to clarify, Vietnam, while we have the plant there, there is no sale there. So our exports are to, you know, countries like, you know, I mean, European countries, Japan, Russia, and all those countries. So there's no uh, sale as such in that region for the freeze dried plant, uh, you know, in, in Vietnam. That's the first one. Secondly, on the question of, so we are operating at peak capacity, there's no doubt. But obviously, you know, we still have some levers to pull there to improve the, uh, improve the profitability. Which we are also, which we are working on. So as such, you know, we will probably will continue. We are evaluating, continuing kind of you know prospects for any kind of uh, you know expansion as we move along. But that is dependent on the you know on the situation as we assess on the market side. The market has been, despite you know this since coffee is you know coffee demand has been stable. Though there are blips in respect due to various other issues of logistics or uh, freight and all that. So as we go, as we see uh, the, the, the the instant coffee plant in Vietnam has got a you know uh, is operating at at, at very high uh, capacities and and uh, and it it will continue to you know uh, move along on those lines. So uh, is it fair to assume that we don't have any uh, capex plans as of right now? No, right now there is no need for capex. We are setting up some liquid extra capacities there. Which will come into stream during later part of the year. So other than that, there's not no other immediate plans of expanding the capacity in Vietnam as of now. Okay, sir. And uh, are there any plans for expanding capacity uh, uh, domestically? Uh, yeah, we uh, continue to evaluate. Uh, I think you have, you, have to, you have to watch the space for some 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 time. But we continue to evaluate because even our India plants are all fully saturated. Uh, we have two plants in India which are fully saturated. And we are looking at, and also just to men, uh, you know in, uh, mention to you, we packed the Tata Coffee grant, which is sold and, and you know and marketed and sold through Tata Consumer, which is also has picked up traction, and uh, that's also continuing to do well in the in, in, uh, well in the in the marketplace. So all these are levers for growth as we see. Okay, okay, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, my uh, next question. Uh, well, we don't have uh, much. We we have a limited exposure to B2C business. Uh, but as the inflation arises in the economy for coffee and other uh, products, uh, are there any impact on our volumes given the down trading and up trading in some cases? No, we are if, not are seeing any down trading in volumes. I say, I see what we are going through is a different kind of issue. For example. You know, one of the one of the countries or the regions for which 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 is which is not doing that well for us right now is Africa, because that has been impacted by inflation in, in respect of coffee on the other tin all you know all the you know uh, the packing materials and all that. So those are yet to pick up. We are also seeing you know kind of uh, uh, you know improvements coming over there in that sense. So these are you know pockets or geographies where we are seeing some impact. But this impact is not not merely you know it has been there for some time. But we are we are able to cover through other geographies. Similarly, for example, on the issue of you know Russia, for example, it is so if demand is stable there. There are other issues, you know, like you know Russia being a country sanctioned, etc. There are we are not able to you know penetrate that much as as before. But these are things which will probably which, which will kind of you know overcome in the next couple of quarters. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. I will get back into the queue for my further questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Lokesh Maru from Nippon India Mutual Funds. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on such a healthy set of uh, numbers. Uh, so I have um, quite uh, many questions. You can stop me whenever, uh, like, I can join back with you later. So uh, number one is to just understand qualitatively on coffee, uh, right? Uh, that in in an environment, if you believe that there is going to be a economic general economic slowdown or a recession, minor recession, if there ever has to be a down trading, um, how does coffee behave? There are three things, key things, right? One is FDC, then a cheaper one is SDC, another is out of home consumption. Then you have instant coffee, which is cheaper. And uh, finally, you have Arabica and Robusta. But like someone who is consuming Arabica may be difficult to shift to Robusta due to taste concern. So in, in general, slow-down environment, qualitatively, how do you see uh, coffee consumption playing with? 
So, we see coffee consumption, we, are, we see in respect of freeze rate, for example, Vietnam plant. Our order book is uh, completely, three, you know, I mean, almost 80-90% full as of now, because of the, the, for the year. So, we don't see any, you know, demand contractions per se, uh, 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 you know, on, on, on the ground of this inflation. But what we are, as I mentioned, what we are seeing is even on and spray, we are doing quite well in that sense. So uh, aglo is a bit impacted because of the so certain geographies which I mentioned regarding, say, Africa, uh, Africa, where the you know the, uh, where it has been for a couple of quarters, we have been seeing about you know slowness in demand and pickups due to one to, for two reasons. One, the impact on account of much higher coffee prices and you know accompanied by the packing material costs. So that is one. Secondly, as a jog, as a as a you know certain geographies where there is you know there could be issues around capitalization of the of the businesses, etc., which is which is leading to some slower offtake. So that's what we are seeing on the Arabica robusta. As you summarized, you know we are, we, we are whatever we are we are produce when whatever we produce, we are able to sell effectively, and we have got you know forward orders. So there are, there are no issues uh, being uh, being seen there. So I, we are not seeing per se for us you know, downtrading, impacting volumes for us. Our issues are more around in a, some geographies where there is slowness in demand due to inflation, and those are, are, are specific in nature. For example, Russia and all that, even they, though there is a war going on there, we are not seeing an impact on demand, and we have, uh, in fact, there are other issues which are contributing, like, you know, availability of shipping lines or logistics issues which are there, but otherwise on demand, we don't see an issue as of now. And just to add to what Venkat has said, is also a large factor of how uh, you know your uh, your product is di you know, differentiated. So I think uh, we have a fairly good uh, uh, and also a, a, a very very you know uh, vibrant and uh, full uh, NPD pipeline. So I think when you take all that into account, I think uh, you know at least for the company wise. I don't see uh, much of a challenge in terms of uh, how you know consumption and uh, being impacted by this uh, slowdown. But yes, of course, there will be geographies. Those geographies, at some point in time, will uh, you know need to be replaced by uh, a, a new geography. So overall, sanguine about uh, our uh, you know uh, our, our future. Understood, sir. And uh, we don't really have uh, that kind of uh, data to you know understand that the, if there is inflation, uh, is there any shift from out of home consumption to instant coffee? Do you have any clue or any uh, you know um, any so qualitative it, sense on does it happen? What are the uh, uh, behavioral uh, impacts or shifts? Yeah. Yeah. So you you know uh, when we had this last two years of COVID. For obvious reasons, uh, you know, uh, out of home consumption was uh, totally impacted, uh, and everything actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, a large large part of it actually moved into in home consumption. But clearly, the entire out of home consumption uh, dissipation, which was a unique event, uh, if I may add, at that point in time, cannot be made up by uh, in home consumption. So. Uh, out of home consumption uh, uh, totally disappearing has to have an in, you know incident like uh, COVID. I don't think uh, out of home consumption uh, you know gets that badly impacted. Yes, uh, overall, if you were to look at it, I think uh, coffee will continue uh, its uh, growth rate or in consumption. It was clocking anything between 1.5 to 2. Uh, uh, just you know, uh, maybe about two, two, two to two point five, uh, just before the COVID came in, it may have slightly slowed down, but there is still uh, enough legs in the uh, coffee market to continue a one point five uh, to two percent uh, uh, growth. Also, just to add, also for example, out of home, you take Starbucks for example. Starbucks uh -huh. has been opening stores and doing exceptionally well. So you know, in fact, our uh, the two the two roasters we have are highly highly utilized. So there's no issues we see there, and in home also, you know, if, example for example, if you take our brand Tata Coffee Grand, uh, which is there, which has been showing good traction, and uh, you know, uh, so that uh, so the kind of demand, the of takes are uh, definitely uh, very healthy. Sure, sir. So uh, on Tata Coffee Grand, like you um, uh, just highlighted, so I think. Um, 
Mr. Uh, Sunil uh, D'Souza uh, had on television highlighted that the strategy is to take the market share of Tata Coffee Grand uh, from the current uh, 1 to 2% to up to 10% um, in coming years uh, in India, uh, right? So is there any uh, differentiated strategy going forward on product wise, uh, be it product wise uh, or how much is it like, you know, just reach wise or distribution wise, which Tata consumer already uh, has penetrated. Uh, so is there anything on the product side as well? When you no, know, we have are... many, quite a few products, uh, okay? So one is, of course, the Tata Coffee Grand, and we have the, the quick filter which we have launched. Then the, so, so there are multiple, you know, uh, kind of products on the, uh, uh, in, 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 uh, exact, uh, so in multiple products are there on the shelf. And secondly, in terms of increase in market share, the distribution reach and all, I am sure that, in, uh, you know, Sunil will probably answer this in the Tata Consumer Analyst call. Uh, sure, sir. So last question on uh, coffee prices, like you highlight uh, on every call, uh, what is your sense on coffee prices going forward, six months down the line, three months down the line, so on? So I, I'll, I'll leave it at uh, three months down the line uh, for this uh, this call. I think uh, coffee prices have come off uh, substantially from where they were uh, three months back. Uh, they were at about 250, 255, even uh, prior to that, close to about 275. Uh, but uh, they have come down to about 225, 230. I do not expect uh, coffee prices to now, at least for the next three months, do any major changes, uh, primarily because uh, whatever uh, weather events uh, that could have possibly happened in any of the uh, locations, uh, you know, the, the period for that has passed. So, you know, uh, if there are going to be any changes, any... Uh, you know, upheavals or uh, difference in uh, prices or whatever, that could only possibly come in, in the, uh, towards the end of third quarter or into, into the fourth quarter. Going forward, at least for the next three to four months, I don't see any uh, major variance. Maybe, you know, a couple of cents here and there, up and down, that's what it. I don't think there's going to be any issues. Sure, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Vignesh Iyer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hello, congratulations sir, on a good set of numbers. In such a challenging circumstances that the commodity prices are quite, uh, you know, in a fluctuation, mode of fluctuation, I would say. Uh, in my last, uh, in the last call, I asked you about this orthodox coffee that predominantly, you know, Sri Lanka operates in, as in orthodox uh, tea. Sri Lanka as an export market too. Uh, so I just want, uh, and you had said that our capacity is uh, fungible, uh, you know, to uh, make uh, orthodox coffee if needed. So if you could tell me how uh, is there any contribution uh, to our current. Uh, revenue in quarter one from orthodox uh, coffee uh, and if there is uh, any spillover from uh, Sri Lankan market due to the uncertainty continuing in the country. So I uh, just to add, I mean, I, I'm sure you 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 are talking about uh, Sri Lankan orthodox uh, tea. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, uh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no issues at all. But uh, uh, yeah, so uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, we are uniquely uh, placed in terms of uh, having the ability to uh, increase the production of our uh, orthodox production uh, because of having uh, plants that uh, are orthodox uh, uh, capable. But uh, uh, I think uh, what we have done is to slowly raise the... Uh, overall, uh, uh, you know, uh, orthodox production. As I mentioned in my uh, commentary earlier, uh, we do see orthodox prices uh, continuing to be buoyant, largely driven by the uh, unfortunate crisis in uh, uh, Sri Lanka. But I think uh, uh, the overall impact on the PNL for the uh, for, for tea will also need to be driven not just by the prices but also the crop in in uh, in itself uh, we have as i mentioned earlier there has been an impact on the crop uh, because of the uh, 
very very inclement weather uh, that uh, prevailed during the uh, during the latter half of uh, the quarter and it still continues to be there but uh, i think we are quite confident that everything else that needs to be in place that is the investments that needed to go into uh, the field and the factories and the fact that there is a um, there is a gradual improvement in uh, uh, the uh, uh, orthodox uh, production as well as prices should augur well for the uh, for the tea business in itself so that's where uh, we see it uh, Uh, so I joined the call late. So thank you, sir, for clarifying things again. And uh, uh, coming to the part, uh, yeah, okay. So we are in a position basically that uh, if if there is a market and it is lucrative enough, we can have a you know a product mix in the tea division in such a way that we raise the percentage of orthodox tea in uh, so yeah. as to you know. Uh, have a better uh, revenue and margins right if yeah. not, if, if, if i can understand it yeah, absolutely we are also open to investing more if required no market situation and and unlike a, uh, unlike a you know uh, coffee plant that needs to come up uh, i mean i'm talking about uh, a, a factory that needs to come up or uh, you know many investments in coffee which takes a far longer period of time uh, the investment into uh, a tea uh, machinery to convert Uh, you know, tea leaf into orthodox, uh, uh, and it coming on board or coming on up to steam is uh, far far uh, shorter. So you know, as Venkat mentioned, we are open to uh, looking at uh, invest further investments to even take up uh, the present fairly healthy uh, numbers even more if if needed. Okay, thank you, sir. And um, what what percentage of Uh, your tea business would currently be into orthodox as in for the quarter one if you could give me a ballpark number for the revenue of what percentage of your total tea business would be orthodox roughly around 20 20, 20 between 20 and 25% roughly would be there okay and the fungibility is up to what 35 40% of your total capacity about 35 uh, yeah. maximum going over 30 36 37% yeah. at I the moment but yeah. as i mentioned uh, this is something that we would be willing to uh, invest yeah. into uh, to uh, you know even take it up further yeah we are continuously evaluating yeah. oh, okay fair thank you sir thank you for all the clarification thank and, you uh, and all the best sir thank, thank you. you thank you very much anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone phone we take the next question from the line of yash pandari neo markets please go ahead sir Mr. Bandari, your line is in talk mode, sir. Please go ahead with your question. Hello. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, and congratulations on the good good numbers. Uh, just a small question. Can you ex- uh, tell the timeline of the merger and when you expect the merger to be completed, and what are the pending approvals? No, as uh, see, uh, we have five. Fi- we have given. We have filed our, uh, the petitions before the NCLT. Okay, both Tata uh, Coffee and Tata Consumer, the respective NCLTs. Now we have we have to wait for the hearing and uh, you know further pro- uh, process on that. So we are on track in uh, in respect of the of the process. Okay, but when you expect the merger to be completed? We expect that uh, hopefully before the end of the financial year we should be uh, we we expect we are sort of you know hoping that it should get over before the end before the end of the financial year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Joshi from ICIC Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks, uh, sir. Basically, uh, sir, just wanted your outlook on eight o'clock. So. Uh, this business had a lot of uh, entry up talking, deep talking, and uh, Uh, during the period, it uh, uh, innovated uh, pretty well, but in patches. So, how do we see the three-year outlook for eight o'clock coffee business uh, now that uh, more or less globally the economy has kind of, uh, and especially in US, it has uh, settled down now. So, uh, uh, do you see market share gains, opportunities for eight o'clock, also opportunities to get into uh, other markets? 
uh, uh, for eight o'clock. So I will restrict the other markets. I we are not able to come. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, Anirudh, sir, your line has some disturbance, sir. C- could you please mute while Asar is responding to your question? Sure, sure. Thank you. So we are not able to come. see. This is three-year time frame you are asking. So obviously, other markets, if if it is appropriate, we will be we, 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 the the business would look at it. But more importantly, on the market share, definitely there is a potential. There is a lot of opportunities there. both on the bags business on as well as on the cake cups so we are seeing good good traction and also 8 o'clock has been active in ter- in terms of the new product uh, uh, launches so that's a, so that that is also an area which we are you know kind of uh, uh, you know focused on and apart from that there is also the ecom and the online uh, you know kind of uh, of penetration which is which is also doing well so as we see as we are looking at as of now definitely you know there is very good opportunity for 8 o'clock to expand the market share other markets of course the business will continue to evaluate as we go along okay and uh, in terms of the uh, tata grand uh, would you like to share any update on that how is the product doing etc and uh, uh, that is one question and lastly on the the uh, pricing of uh, coffee because uh, last year there were some issues in brazil and uh, it led to inflationary situation now obviously world over the inflationary situation is coming down means obviously inflation is still high but uh, compared to earlier expectation uh, the probably the commodity prices are uh, uh, expected to be lower so how do you see the outlook for coffee prices also uh, as well as tata coffee you know many variants have been launched apart from the you know originally tata coffee grand which has the uh, free spread and the uh, uh, element so there are there is also quick filter which has been launched so tata coffee grand definitely in along along with an expanded distribution uh, uh, and the product pipeline and the innovations uh, the 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 the, uh, the the business is definitely poised for uh, Uh, uh much much better uh, 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 volumes and market share on coffee yeah the coffee prices as i was mentioning a little while back anurudh uh, was uh, the fact that i think uh, all all the weather events that could have possibly spoiled the or you know spoiled the party uh, if i may put put it that way have uh, have uh, kind of uh, the period for that has kind of passed so now as i see at least for the next uh, at least in the short term uh, for the next 3 to 4 4 months and maybe uh, slightly longer than that uh, could be uh, could be a period where uh, you don't see uh, you know too many uh, fluctuations in in the prices the prices have kind of settled uh, for both uh, uh, arabica and robusta at uh, Uh, levels which are uh, you know uh, substantially better than what they were uh, year before last but uh, you know obviously have come off uh, their highs which was uh, which we were seeing in the in the, uh, post that uh, weather event in uh, in brazil but what will happen in the fourth quarter in terms of the overall production in in terms of uh, the impact of uh, uh, any uh, unfortunate uh, weather event uh, while harvest uh, starts in uh, brazil is uh, obviously something that we may we need to wait and see but uh, at the moment i do not see coffee prices uh, doing too much different from what and where they are at the moment okay sure sure sir uh, that is uh, very helpful many thanks thank you thank you sir Ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for the day I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments over to you sir So well, thank you very much uh, everyone and thank you for joining the call it was a pleasure having you all and hope to see you for the next uh, uh, quarter call thank you thank you very much Thank you on behalf of ICICI security that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines <laughs>